Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here and welcome to episode number 29 of my FIFA 15 Road to Glory career mode with Shrewsbury and today we finish the season and venture into the next season. Exciting times, uh, League One football, uh, won't get into the games of course but yeah, seeing the initial budgets, expectations, all of that, we did win uh, the Manager of the Season award, pretty expected, dominated the season in the league, uh, probably would have got a bit more points if I didn't simulate maybe the last five or six, uh, seven, eight games, can't remember the exact amount I simmed, but yeah, we lost a few because of that draw, I'm not going to complain because we were going to at least yeah, get promoted, and Portsmouth, yeah, they were, were picking up too many points late as well, so pretty comfortable there, an amazing season it was really, uh, we achieved what was expected of us, but I wanted to yeah, my own expectations. It was just to, you get promoted. And again, it probably is the same. Do you think we can do it in two consecutive seasons? Most people do what I feel. Leave your comments. Uh, when you do this kind of uh, career mode, do you usually get promoted every year up into the Premier League? Uh, I feel our squad is in a really good position for us to do that. Uh, you can see the season budget now is 2.6 million uh, with a 15k wage budget. I think that's acceptable. Like you always get a decent, yeah, decent wage budget for this team. I feel 2.6 million, uh, but then the wage budget is low. But then you go for yeah guys in leagues that are not as popular, and most of their wages are pretty small. And you can see uh, the objective for us is finish mid-table. So that allows us, well, hopefully, will allow us to ask for money later in the season, like I did. In League 2, I did that because the expectations were about mid-table as well, I think. And then I was overachieving. So if I start well, start around the top and I know I'm going to be around the promotion places, I can do, yeah, put that up to fight for promotion and maybe ask for a million at least and see if that works. Uh, I'm not sure what you guys think on that, but that could be something good to do when you already don't have the highest expectations uh, for the team. So start off with the youth squad report here. Aaron Eves, yeah, probably not going to be good enough for the future. His current overall... Uh, for me, it needs to be above 60. And of course, Paula Heckway as well. I know how to say his name now because I searched on the internet and Michael Heckway, who plays for Tranmere Rovers, in a video, he said how to pronounce his name, how to pronounce his last name anyway. Uh, so I'll know that for sure now. But apart from that side of things, he looks really good, especially if he can stay until May for the next season we're going to be playing. Uh, he could be around a 70 overall already, and imagine then he maybe could push to an 80 overall, or at least high 70s, which is crazy to think. Uh, but also, pre-contracts, in case you forgot, just got to try and remember who they were. Uh, it was Wild and Opara, two important players, really. Opara as a really uh, quicker, uh, stronger centre-back, and Wild as a just a quick winger, you know, on the left side, which we really, really need. Those two were important signings, and they're going to come in and be really key players for us for free. It's crazy, and who knows if we're going to keep them in the future or not. Wild could be questionable. Opara is a really quick centre-back, uh, even if he doesn't get into the high 70s or something, because he's old already. Well, not old. He's about, what is he, like 26, 27, so he's not going to improve a whole lot more. So he could still play when you get to Premier League level. He's just a really fast centre-back in FIFA. And also Edwards. Oh, yeah, he was another one who joined on a free transfer oh, on a pre-contract. Uh, Edwards, he's really well-rounded. Again, can play a lot of positions. Got the high and high work rates and coming at right back if needed. That's important uh, because we don't really have another right back. He's got the engine as well. He'll be able to play full games, be available for a lot of games, have the high stamina, you know, to have high fitness uh, to play every single game. Well, not every single game, most games anyway. But we've got Grandison who can play right back as well, which he pl may be playing more there because uh, with bringing in Opara, that's another centre-back position that's taken. You think him and Goldson... Uh, will be, yeah, the leading partnership. But look at that. Wild. Look at that pace on him, though. And then he's got, yeah, some decent attacking attributes. He's actually a really good free kick taker. 72 accuracy. So we've got a good... I feel left-footed players are, are better than right-footed players. I feel they're just a bit more technical, you know? And... They're just really good at free kicks and set pieces in general. So he's going to be a very important signing for us. But look at that Opara. 91 sprint speed. And what, 90 jumping as well. 90 acceleration, I think he had. All the pace attributes are above 80. And high defensive work rate. Good height as well. 6 foot 2. It's not super tall, but still really good. He's got the power header trait. He's a speed star. Amazing. And like I said, he's not a younger guy, so he's not going to be increasing. Uh, but he's not too old yet. He's probably going to play three or four seasons at his best uh, without being a 
yeah, a worry for us. That's really, really good. Hopefully be able to play by the time we get to the Premier League, regardless of his overall rating. He just has to perform. If he can perform at Championship, uh, we'll definitely give him the chance. Uh, but yeah, that's talking about the future. I've got to focus at the current point in time. So that leads to Ellis maybe being on the outer at the club, especially as he wanted a bigger wage. Uh, Dominic Smith, we're going to try and yeah send out on loan because we just beefed up our defenders in the centre-back position now. And who knows? We'll look for more defensive signings, maybe at a right-back. Even though we have players that can play there, they're already going to take other positions, like Edwards. I'd rather play him in a centre-mid position. Liam Lawrence, it's like he hasn't dropped at all. He's like 68 overall. Didn't he start last season was 67? Can't really remember. Going to have to go watch the first episode. Uh, James Wazolowski, unfortunately. I'm not sure if I do it yet, or do I? But I try to list him... Uh, and listen to offers at least at some point, because, yeah, I may do it, yeah, I do it now, his morale's bad, everything like that, form was bad, he didn't make an impact for me, Aaron Wildig was considering the same thing, but I feel he's just a little bit more important, because he can play two positions, James Caton was really impressive late last season, second half of the season, Josh Ginelli could probably play left mid and right mid, Jordan Clark, if someone told me he doesn't actually develop, and last year he showed that kind of. So, especially we've got Lawless in as well, who's seven better ratings than him with potential. Uh, so, really, I think it's best to sell him. He doesn't have any outstanding attributes, and for a wide play, he's not super pacey or anything. So, Sean McGee, I'll try and loan, but I think Clark, yeah, I think it's really, it's time for him to leave the club. Last season, he had to show a lot more development, and with other people saying, at least one person in particular said that he does grow, and he compared to Caton as well. Uh, Caton, he does grow, but Clark doesn't, so that backs it up for B. But look at Nicholas Muller. He looks amazing, and people were saying he's not going to grow in his physicals. Uh, I actually researched that a while ago, and now it's just, yeah, reminding me. Uh, yeah, apparently that was in the game. If you sign them after May, they don't grow. But then it was updated later. Like, that's not... A, a, it's not an issue anymore. I, I remember last time I checked, uh, people doing, like, tests on that. It's not an issue anymore. They can still grow. Sure, some don't grow, but some still do. So it's not an issue, but he's a beast anyway. Uh, I just hope if we play him... Like, if you play a player in FIFA, all his attributes grow. Well, not all of them. The necessary ones for his position he's playing in, you know. So hopefully it won't be an issue because he has a... He's like... Could be a superstar already, but hopefully he can develop to yeah, continue that. Also, uh, Adu Amadi from AC Milan is available. He's transfer listed. Only one year left on his contract. Can get him at a good price. So here I'm just offering zero because don't forget, I got an Yee for zero. Um, I inquired for him though. But still, there's a chance to get him fairly cheap. I don't think I will get him for the zero, but... It just, yeah, it's it's a stepping stone for negotiating, and he's so quick. That's, I would say that's the not only the reason I signed him, but it's a big reason, you know. Wide players, you want them to get forward with their pace and be a danger, He, but he probably won't score much goal, so I'm not going to, like, abuse the pace and uh, try and score with him. No, you got to use wingers how you would use them. You want wingers. Wingers are supposed to be quick, you know? Uh, so you're going to use that out wide and get balls in and everything like that to yeah, run at the defense, you know, be a danger and create stuff. That's what you want with your wingers. So Douglas as well, we'll try and swoop for him. Uh, he was transfer listed. Uh, so we could get a couple of quality guys here from quality teams, but the wage is a concern for me. So you see, that's the difference. The wages are higher on these uh, players from bigger teams, uh, regardless of how good they are. Like, you probably get someone, but he's well-rated, you know, because he's at a good team as well. He's, that's the difference. Higher wage, but he's well-rated uh, well all-round in his attributes as well. And you can see, interesting move that will be to RC Lons in France for James Wazolowski. I just feel, yeah, having bad <laughs> form and very unhappy morale, it's time for him to go. We need to push forward. And he's just like a defensive player. Doesn't have too much about him. Uh, there's one guy in a quiet about, but I don't feel I would have signed him. Uh, but yeah, I was just trying to get maybe another NE, trying to get some inquiries. But I put them in the archive, actually, so I can revert to them later. And I can go, uh, see, so there's 1.2 for him. Uh, Rolly Bonavarsia, good price. And a couple other guys. Uh, Brandon Michele, who's a good young center back. Michael Zulo, who's a quick left back, if we want to get another left back. Because, of course, uh, we only have the one right now in Demetriou. Uh, but again, we can, yeah, rotate our fullbacks and everything like that that in the team, so now we've we've got money, that's all we need to do, yeah, we need to buy players, if you have any suggestions for signings, uh, good value players that are cheap on the wages, drop in the comments, so Wesolowski 
has moved on now to RC Lon. So we get, yeah, just a bit over 200k for that, which is pretty good. AC Milan, probably as accepted um, or expected, they wouldn't accept that. <laughs> and yeah, zero. They want to get something for him. But his contract is running out in a year. I didn't want to put too much. So we budget to 200k. And we'll see, yeah, if they budge this time. Uh, because he'll be an impact player. Like, he's a left winger, but he's right-footed. So, that's where I'm intent. I'm signing him to play him on right midfield, if you just want to know. There's Inez Yunal. Again, not really sure if that's how you say his name. He's a good player in Football Manager this year, but they want, yeah, a bit money. Um, uh, reasonable, because he's a talent. They want a, yeah, a bit of cash for him. And also, Douglas won't be able to get him on the cheap from Barca. He's got three years left on his contract as well. And this kind of situation, I want to, yeah, go for guys like Adu Amadi, who's only got one year left on their contract. You can get them a bit cheaper uh, to sign them. Obviously, will be available for a pre-contract in January. That's why they would be a bit cheaper. So I'm trying to sign him up here, just going by 200K each time. 400K, come on, AC Milan. You think that has to be a reasonable fee. And scouting more players, there's Cabral. He looks really nice, doesn't he? He could be a left winger. It may be an alternate signing uh, to Adu Amadi. Uh, looks really good. A bit younger as well. Oh, no. They're about the same age, Adu Amadi. He just seems older. I don't know, looking at his picture. Eli Babal, he's Australian, stronger striker. Uh, obviously, nowhere near as good, but in some <laughs> to some people, he's known as the Australian Ibrahimovic. But that shall be it for now, guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed this episode going to next season. Can we hit 300 likes, and I'll upload the next episode. And I'll see you guys there.